So it, it happens, you know, I apologize to her, you know, so it, it happens sometimes, you know, and I, I don't think it's fair, you know, I don't think, I don't think they should do that. So were there specific challenges in USA that motivated your decision to relocate to Africa, that is Kenya, and have you found a fulfilling lifestyle? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a really good one. I like that one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? The cost of living here is a lot better than in the USA. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, with the work that I do, I'm a teacher, mm. online teacher, so I can I can be a teacher in the US. So you teach English as a foreign language? That's right. Yeah. When you're getting paid with US dollar and you come to Africa, yes. you can live a lot better. You know, you can live yeah, a lot... Yeah, the rich man in town. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but maybe not in the US, right? If you're... Yeah. <laughs> What do you think? Should African Americans come to Africa looking for a job? Mm -hmm. Or what do you think? Let me say this. I, I, I don't think so. I think if you come to Africa, you need to already have a job, right? Or have some savings, right? Have a, have a, a lot of savings before you come here. And start a business, right? Start something and, and, and hire Kenyans, hire other Africans, right? I think that's the way that we can all help each other. This is controversial, maybe, but I think that uh, black Americans should even get with Kenyans, right? Have a, a, a Kenyan American baby, you know? So they can have connection to Kenya and America. Uh, mm -hmm. Has your lifestyle changed since you moved to Africa? Yeah, yeah, mm. it has. Mm. A little bit, yeah. I think um, in the US I was always working, right? Yes, yes. And, and she knows, right? I was always uh, uh, calling her from work, right? Because I didn't have a lot of extra time. But being in Kenya, I have a lot of extra time to do interviews like this. Yes and to do a lot of other cool stuff, you know? So um, I'm more relaxed, uh, I can work out more, I can um, uh, buy, uh, there's cheaper stuff you can buy, you know, houses, there's good housing um, here to buy for cheap, so there's a lot of uh, things I can do. How did you meet? Oh. How do I meet her? Yes. Ah, okay, let me let her tell the story. Yeah. She's really good at yeah, these stories. Yeah, it's story time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we met online in 2021, mm. just on one of these dating apps. And then we talked online, it was June 2021, and then August, he, he moved to Kenya. I picked him from the airport and then... Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I was looking for an African woman, mm. you know, and I was on a dating app doing mm. it. It's not always the best place, but yes. I was on a dating app because I wasn't here, right? Mm -hmm. So I was on a dating app, and um, I was always asking the woman, I want an African wife, so you know? So you going around, I want an African <laughs> Yes, I was, I really was, I was like, saying okay. that. <laughs> I'm looking for an African wife, and I come, I marry you, we get a house. So I was like, that's weird, yeah. so, that, that, Like, that, you know, when that, a guy that is promising so too much here, yeah, it's, 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 it's a red flag. Red flag. Yes. Yeah. But for him, he was like, yeah. Serious. Yes. So when he arrived, he yeah. did everything he was texting. Yes. So when he arrived, he yeah. did everything yes. he was texting. Yeah. so much experience with buying land not yet but we will in the future we will and we want to buy land like you said in Kasumu. But, but you've done some researches say one more time researches oh a little bit we only did a little re bit of research <laughs> but you know i think there's better opportunities in kenya than tanzania right and then some other african countries when it comes to buying land you know so i i think kenya is a good place to come if you want to buy land and but you gotta do it quick because Kenya's prices are increasing fast, right? So that's that's another thing. And then I have the benefit of having a Kenyan wife, yeah. So it makes it makes getting land a little bit easier for me, I think. <laughs> true, true, true. But um, the one thing you should know about um, buying land in Kenya is that after you buy your land, it's yours forever. Mm. Um, it can be easily inherited um, by your daughter and um, your generation, unlike other countries outside there. Yeah. Once you buy land, it's yours forever. Yeah. Till death, 
your generation takes over, yeah. it's always yours, yeah. your bloodline. So it's a huge investment here. So it's something that you guys should look into. So how is the cost of living in Kenya? Oh, man, it's a lot cheaper than the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's more than some other African countries, but it's, it's not as much as the U.S. So we're paying maybe, or for me, half of what I was doing in U.S., mm, you know? That's a lot of savings. Yeah, and I can give you an example. Uh, I don't mind giving you this example. In the, U okay. in the U.S., I was uh, paying around 1000 1200 for rent for an apartment. Which is a lot of how much is that in Kenyan shilling? Like maybe one hundred and sixty thousand Kenyan shillings a month. Yeah, one hundred and sixty thousand Kenyan shilling. But in you in uh, Kenya, we're paying two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a month. Pro, and in the U.S., it was uh, around sixteen, one thousand two hundred dollars. One hundred and sixty thousand Kenyan shilling. Yeah. But here we're only paying twenty-seven thousand a month for rent for a two-bedroom yeah. modern house. So that's a thousand dollar difference, you know, from Kenya in the U.S., right? And by the way, my apartment in the U.S. was a one bedroom. The apartment here in Kenya is a two bedroom. So two hundred dollars for a two bedroom, one thousand two hundred for one bedroom in the U.S., right? A thousand dollar difference. Ah, that's a lot of money. Right now, a thousand dollars is one fifty thousand Kenya shillings. That is enough to buy you land here in Kenya. <laughs> in the village. <laughs> even in even in Nini, even in Ukambani, Ukumachakos. Yeah. In th those interiors, you can find good land. Yeah. And imagine you are you can even buy like land each month out of the savings you are making. Right. Right. <laughs> so um, let's move to the next one. Uh -huh. We are in the eighth, I guess. So how has this uh, transition from USA to Africa to Kenya uh, affected your sense of identity? Do you find a stronger connection to your African heritage yeah. now that you're living in Kenya? Ah, okay, this is a little bit of a spiritual question. Mm, yeah. I, th I, think, um, I think for me, uh, or I think for any black American that comes to Africa, I think Mother Africa will test you, all right? So all the uh, foreigners that I know that have come to Kenya or anywhere in Africa have had like obstacles to overcome, you know, and it really teaches you who you are, I think, you know, because you're really seeing like real life in Kenya, you know, compared to the U.S. U.S. is not, I don't think it's real life in the U.S. Here is real life. You can see poverty in Kenya, you know, you can see the rich in Kenya. So it's, you you know, it, it tests you in every way in Kenya, I would say, in Africa. So do you feel an African-American in Kenya or do you feel an African? Mm. I know it's hard, but it's hard. <laughs> how do you feel? Oh, man. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of labels. And this might be close to what Mark Meets Africa says, probably. No, right? he's talking like Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing, right? I don't like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like him in that way. You know, I don't like labels, you know, so I don't want to label myself. But, you know, I think it's obvious I'm African, right? And I have to say I'm American too, you know? You, so I'm both, you know, you can say. But really, we're all citizens of the world, right? And all black people are citizens of Africa. So I can say it like that. <laughs> all black people are citizens of Africa. Okay. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you might be walking somewhere, okay. but you don't feel like you vibe. Even myself here in Kenya, as a Kenyan, I've been to some places I didn't feel welcomed. I didn't feel I belong. And uh, I, perhaps that is where the root of my question came from. So m many places you walk, do you feel like you are welcomed as an African or as an African-American? Uh, African-American now represents, uh, stop, seeing at the, stop looking at it as a, as a label now. Look at it as a, as a visitor, as a foreigner, as the unwelcomed, yeah. yeah, people look at you as unwelcomed also, yeah. I feel the most welcome in Kenya out of all the, almost all the countries I've been to, you know, Kenya and, and Ethiopia, I have to say. But Kenya, I feel very welcome. People are very friendly. Um, there's times, though, as an American, you might feel um, out of step, I can say, because, you know, people are speaking Swahili. You know, people speak English in Kenya. 
But if you really want to get to know someone, you have to speak Swahili, right? So sometimes you're, if you don't speak Swahili, you can't connect as well, you know? So in that way, uh, there are some differences, right? And, and that's why maybe some black Americans might even go back to America, right? But, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's, that's about it, yeah. I, but I do feel connected and welcomed all the time in Kenya, except by the immigration. <laughs> yeah. They have to look at you by the paper. <laughs> right, right, right. So, brother, um, do you know Phil? Phil from African Diaspora News Channel. Brother Phil. Brother Phil. Oh, not Doctor. <laughs> See, Doctor Phil. Uh, brother Phil. He's this huge guy, and he's African American. Where is he? Yeah, Africa Diaspora News Channel. Okay. Yeah, he he runs that channel. So he was saying that African Americans should not go to a country where Swahili is the official and the national language. In the entire Africa, there's only one country with those specifications. Just a single country Tanzania. with those specific uh, those things, you know? <laughs> so, in short, he was saying African Americans should not move to Tanzania because it is Tanzania which has those specifications. Those are characteristics of Tanzania, you know? Because of Swahili, it's really hard to learn Swahili. And if you can't learn Swahili, you can't, you can't know many things, you know. Yeah. But Kenya is different. Ghana is different. See, right now you might say that language of Swahili is a difficult thing. Wait till you... You said you lived in Tanzania. You experienced it. I don't have to explain, brother. Everyone is speaking Swahili. Mathematics is being taught by Swahili. Chemistry Swahili. Everything is Swahili. Swahili. Imagine, imagine Sister Faith. Um, I myself as a Kenyan, I struggle to listen to those people. And they're my neighbors down here. And I struggle to listen to them. How about an African-American brother who has traveled so far? You know, it reached a point they wanted to make uh, Swahili a language in the African Union. Yeah. which I thought it was a great idea. It's good that African-Americans learn uh, Swahili. Swahili is not only spoken in Tanzania. It's spreading. It's like a disease. Yeah. <laughs> a good disease, maybe. Yeah, a, good, a good one. Uh -huh. Spreading to Rwanda, spreading to Burundi. Imagine Rwandese are speaking Swahili, brother. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of Swahili. Yeah. So, uh, about, about Swahili, it's something that people should learn to to Nini, learn to learn, learn to learn it, yeah. And you'll find your stay in Africa uh, one step easier. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm learning. Um, kidogo, kidogo, right? <laughs> yeah. What does kidogo, kidogo mean? Little by little, right? Yeah. Little by little, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, little by little. Kidogo, kidogo. kidogo. Yeah, or pole pole. That's yeah. another one, right? Yeah, pole pole. Pole pole. pole. Yeah, right, right. So, <laughs> so I'm learning slowly. Uh, yeah, I'm learning slowly. And that's, you're right. You know, you should learn it. And by the way, for Americans, right, coming to, to Africa, I think Kenya is a softer landing for black Americans. Because like you said, it's going to be a lot more difficult being in Tanzania, right? And trying, especially if you don't know Swahili, trying to get around. I'm lucky I had her with me yeah. right yeah. <laughs> or else i don't know i don't know if it would worked out so well in tanzania for me right <laughs> so yeah you know fate has one way of making things work for it <laughs> now 400 years ago that slave ship carried your ancestors brother uh you are you are enslaved mm. and mm. i was colonized mm. so not that i who remained in the continent was drinking milk and honey no i was being whipped as the same way you are being whipped so what do you think is the relationship between african americans and africans do you think it's a good thing because there is this idea or this conspiracy uh, and you can give a good perspective because you are two in one brother yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there's a disconnect, to be honest with you. I think a lot of Kenyans don't know so much about black Americans, more than Tanzanians or more than Ugandans, but still not so much. And I feel like uh, Americans, definitely, black Americans don't know so much about Kenyans, right? Don't know so much about Africans. My fiance, she was, uh, she's popular on TikTok, by the way. 
she's a huge following and um she um she what she her focus is on um connecting um african women kenyan women to black american men right so, so she does matchmaking yeah she does a little bit of matchmaking <laughs> so i want to i want to let you maybe she can talk a little bit about this too and, and hear her opinion on it mm -hmm. yeah so you know most kenyans they don't know about black americans so that that's something i didn't know so when i was posting uh my relationship at first yeah so when i was posting on tiktok that i have a black american they're asking me where do black americans come from how can we get black americans so <laughs> even if you go through my tiktok <laughs> so they're asking me yeah where can we get black americans so then i decided uh, why not make my tiktok just a page to like tell people how they can get black americans and at that time i had like only like 500 followers so i decided so when someone asks where can we get a black american then i reply with a video i tell them when you go on a dating app they are found in america or the uk that's where you'll find most of them so that's just i opened my tiktok so now most of them know about black americans and my tiktok has gone very quick it's almost thirty thousand followers just mm -hmm. girls consulting on black american men <laughs> You know, uh, Af African Americans or Black Americans are very supportive people. Uh, back, I, I, I remember when I was still monetized, I could receive a lot of super things, saying thank you for remembering us, for connecting us back to the motherland. You call Africa the motherland. Mm -hmm. That is how they call Africa. And it's, we Africans might not call Africa the motherland. We see it as just a big landmass where we have an island on the other side called Madagascar. And 54, is it 55 or 54? Four states. I think we have 55 now. Mm. Uh, South Sudan is the... Oh, the newest. The newest, yeah. 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 So with this way, you've reached many African-Americans and uh, you've made Africans meet with African-Americans. Yeah. I can say it's a, it's, 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 it's a nice thing you're doing. <laughs> and like many girls say, thank you. I found a guy like very many it has worked. So you get even some will send like 500 children to say thank you for your advice. Mm -hmm. It worked. So like the matchmaking has really worked. Bro, do you think that um, that should be something that um, should make us the natives worried that our mm -hmm. women will be taken back <laughs> to the U.S.? I, How does that make us feel? <laughs> okay, in, a, in, a, in as much as uh, whatever sister is doing is happening, I yeah. believe there are other people also. Uh, we have many women, brother. We have so many women. So, okay. Even if each man was to have ten, I'm not polygamous by any means, but if each man was to have ten, we'd still have a, a country full of women. Sure. Yes. So it's still we have a many we, we we have many of them, and the reason why African Americans are moving to Africa, even Akon said he would prefer African woman, even that passport bro, African woman. You see, there is something about an African woman. I'm not trying to say something sweet or 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 or, or what. African women are still keeping that value, that value of woman. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree completely. And for my, for my fiance's TikTok too, you know, it's, it's, it goes the other way around too. But maybe just more women are coming to her more than more than men, right? But it, we're, she's definitely open for the other way around too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, um, let's move to another whole question. Um, now that you've been in Africa for a few years, let's say four now, straight? You've... Three. Probably. About three years. Um, probably, w what are some of the tips that you'd give um, black Americans mm -hmm. who do want to come to Africa? For them to stay in Africa, like, um, peacefully enjoy their stay. What are some of the tips that probably you could um, advise them? Good question. Number one, have a job before you come here. Because you don't want to be in Africa and not have money, right? <laughs> so, so if you have money, Kenya is amazing. But if you don't, it's, it's going to be quite difficult for you, you know? So have an online job, you know, um, have some savings before you come. That's the most important tip, I would say, when coming here. And, and connect with the local, you know, connect with someone, you know, so you can know what to do, what's right and what's wrong, right? A lot of, probably a lot of passport bros are getting in a lot of trouble, right, with the law, because they don't know what, what they're supposed to be doing, right? And the women that 
they have those casual relationships with are not really looking out for them, right? So, so you need to have a um, someone that you trust, you know, uh, with you, you know, and someone that you can talk to. So I would say those two are the most important things. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, bro. And um, how do you get connect with your family back in the U.S.? Oh, now yeah. that you've been in uh, in Africa for the longest time, you're actually African right now. <laughs> Uh, you know, recently I went back to the United States to visit because uh, I had to show the baby, right? We have a daughter. I had to show her off to my family. So then I returned. So I connected with them in that way, but also just Zoom. Zoom calls, uh, the technology nowadays, right, is amazing, right? So in Kenya has really good Wi-Fi, right, in Kenya. I don't know. Yes, that's right. Best internet, right? I love Zuku. So <laughs> I use Zuku. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Depends on where you are, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it depends, but it's, it's, the download speeds are faster, but the upload speeds are low. If I want to do a live stream, I have to buy cellular data. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can give me some tips <laughs> on the Wi Fi. But yeah, so I connect uh, online, you know. Uh, yeah, it's very easy, very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Wow, that's it. So, in what ways do you think your move to Kenya impacted your worldview? Oh. And you didn't tell us how many countries you visited before you answered this question. I think uh, visiting Africa makes you realize. Uh, okay, oh, first tell us how many countries you visited. Oh, how many countries? Oh, oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it was African countries, four. Four. Yep. One. Yep. Uh, Kenya. Kenya. Tanzania. Tanzania. Uganda. Uganda. Ethiopia. Ethiopia. And then South Africa in February, but that's it right now. Oh, you've not yet. <laughs> not yeah. yet. Not yet for okay. South Africa. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. you've you've now been to East Eastern African countries. Yes, that's right. And Ethiopia is northern, kind of, right? Or what would you what would you categorize Ethiopia as? Northern or eastern? When you look at the map, uh -huh. Ethiopia is close to the Horn of Africa, but okay. it's not in the Horn of Africa. Gotcha. We have countries like Eritrea, uh, countries like this, this country called Tunisia, somewhere there yeah. also. Somalia also, also has a stretch to that Horn of Africa. When you look at the map of Africa, Africa is divided into Sub-Saharan and Saharan. Uh, also we have the Northern, uh, Southern, Eastern, Western. In Eastern, we have Eastern and we have East. Here is where we have the difference. We have the East, Eastern and the East. The Eastern has more countries, but the East has less countries. The East Africa countries are countries that are members of the EAC, East African Community. Now, we have Eastern. Eastern, is, Eastern has Ethiopia. So Ethiopia is in Eastern part of Kenya. Part, part, part of Africa. Yeah, yeah, part of Greece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got you. That's good. That's good information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in what ways do you think uh, moving to Kenya has impacted your world? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It just made me uh, realize, you know, just see the world more. You know, you can, you know, in the U.S. is kind of like being in a box a little bit. You know. Yeah, living in the U.S. is like living in a box. You know, because. You know, even if you're poor in the U.S., you still have a car, you know, like the, the homeless people live in the car at Walmart in the parking lot. Right. So and, and I tell other Africans this or people say they have a car and they're poor. Right. Yeah, that's so, really tough. <laughs> right, right. Having so, a car in Africa is a very big deal. Yeah. Yes. Right. You, you've seen that for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So so, you know, being in Africa, you know, uh, allowed me to see the world more, you know, understand the world more, you know. And, and, and just you just like feel the world more if you know what, what you know what I mean by that mm -hmm. so yeah I would leave it at that yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I like the answer brother mm -hmm. so we have number 14 have you encountered any misconceptions mm -hmm. or stereotypes about black Americans yeah yeah <laughs> mm. uh, I want to say um... okay let me let me tell you mine okay let me tell you mine uh, I had these stereotypes about black Americans. Mm -hmm. See, one day I'm doing my content as always. Then I'm getting a message, my email. I have my email where people can contact me for business. Mm -hmm. I do consultations also. So I'm getting these emails. Somebody say, hey, brother, 
this is my contact. Contact me so that we can get to know each other. Know each other, brother. I'm like, okay. Let's do it. I slide to his email. How are you, brother? He sends me his number. After sending me his number, the next day he sends me driving a car and he's at the gym and he's counting a lot of money. <laughs> but then my fiance has, it, it was this, it was the phone you are having. It was mm-hmm. this, one of these phones. Gotcha. So she comes across it. You know, I don't hide my passwords and all that. Mm-hmm. She wants peace. <laughs> you say the, those are some of the tips you need to have an African woman <laughs> so she slides through them and she sees a man sending all these and she asks me who is this guy you know women have that instinct they can mm. see something we cannot see mm. but they can sense it from afar my girl saw that thing and she told me no how can a man send a, another man gym and money and driving a car and showing his biceps <laughs> I, 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 I'm like, no, chill. This guy is just a, an African-American who is trying to find his home in Africa. <laughs> so the next time, it, it, it took a lot of time. Another day, he sends me some emails, starts chatting, or stuff now, texting, texting, texting. Yeah. Then he, he sends me this message. I'm like, uh, I want to get to know you better. Mm-hmm. Hi, mm-hmm. get to know me better. Mm-hmm. But I'm always posting content here. <laughs> how, do you, how do you want to get to know me better? Mm. And it's like, okay, uh, you know, I want to tell you something. Uh-huh. So I, I immediately I knew there was something wrong because mm. I already had that suspicion from my woman. She told me she senses something from that guy, you know? Mm. So was it that my girl was right? This guy that, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, I told him, you know, I have a woman and uh, we have a family together. Mm -hmm. I'm telling him just to keep things okay. Mm -hmm. This guy went ahead to say, you know, I love you. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A man, bro. Uh, You see, Jesus says, Mm -hmm. love one another as brothers and as sisters. Mm -hmm. And then we have the man and woman, the husband and wife. You see, I had this concept ever since that day. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to fight it each day. Mm. So but it's a stereotype you're having. It's a stereotype that African Americans are gays. Mm. Wow. <laughs> you see where, it came? <laughs> see where it came from? There is where it came from, brother. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'll say this about that. I think in the African American community, uh, in the Black American community, most of them don't accept gays. You know, so this goes completely against what you're saying. You know, they don't accept it. Out of everyone in the in the U.S. The black Americans are probably the most anti-gay community in the U.S. So, so, but there still are gay people that are, that are black in America. So it still happens. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, yeah, I would have to say that to that. But there's many stereotypes. You know, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of Kenyans think uh, I might be a rapper, right? With the dreadlocks of the long hair. Uh, or a Rwandan. Someone compared me to a Rwandan singer. I don't know. I forget his name. What's Mr. the Rwandan singer's name? Do you the remember? one who sang the song of this girl is on fire. You know him, Andrew. Andrew <laughs> someone. He has dreadlocks. Ah. Okay. Oh, I'll go, I'll go check okay. him. You know okay. him, okay. You know him, right? <laughs> I think I know someone with the name in Rwanda. Yeah. But I'll check. So they always call me, they always say I look like this guy, you know, from Rwanda. And or a rapper, or maybe, you know, some uh, people might think that I smoke weed. Right. Because I have dreadlocks. Right. So this has happened multiple times to me, you know. So. So, uh, yeah, there are some stereotypes that Kenyans have. Or right. Also in Kenya, when you have dreadlocks and you have your hair like that, mm-hmm. there was a time some guys are asking me, is that guy gay? Then I told them, oh. no, he's my husband. <laughs> then they're like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, in America, it's just normal to have dreadlocks. But they think like in Kenya, most guys who do the hair like this are gay. Mm. So it's also another stereotype. <laughs> Maybe the earrings too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think that's another topic, but it 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 happens that it has it has just appeared in our conversation. Uh, in Kenya, let's say dreads, we we also say that you are a thief, and that you are will always be a suspect, always, always, even if you are from the church and you're carrying your Bible. 
you will always be a suspect. You will always be... The first thing that rings in, an, in a Kenyan mind, most of us, mostly those from outside Nairobi, they see a dread, they see a bad past. But we who are living in Nairobi, we are used to seeing it. I don't think you still... Yeah. Yeah. So... So you're saying that mostly that doesn't happen so much in Nairobi, but maybe if I went to like Mombasa or a smaller place, mm -hmm. I'll experience it more, maybe. Mm -hmm. You see, we are saying it in a jokingly way, yeah. but it's, it's intense and it's serious. Yeah. yeah. Even with the police. Okay, you know, in the village sometimes they do like a, a random checking in houses. If your son has redlocks, they cut it. The chief comes and cuts the dreadlocks. Oh. In the villages, they do that. It's that serious. Because they believe um, the locks come with um, something else. Probably you're a yeah, bad, bad man. But bro, me, I'm always saying, just do what your conscience tells you to do. Because those people even carrying the Bible do the worst things, you know? I can never stand and tell a rasta person, cut off your rasta. I can't say that, you know? If I have no reason, I can't say you, you know, uh, from the, we talked to a guy uh, from the Foundation of Youth. He was the owner of it. He has dreadlocks. And for him, having dreadlocks is a spiritual thing for him, right? He says that he's a spiritual connection to his dreadlocks. So, we, so for people, uh, they call them Rastas, right? You guys call them Rastas, right? Um, a lot of them have a connection to dreadlocks. Or if I see a Rasta man walking past, like we're both going to like, hey, hey, like we're going to greet each other, right? <laughs> it's just like a, 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 a even deeper brotherhood between the, the people with dreadlocks. So maybe not so good with the police, right? But with other uh, Rasta people, if you're a black American, you have dreadlocks, you come to Kenya, you can make a connection, an easy connection with people with dreadlocks, you know? That's concrete. So, um, uh -huh. <clears throat> so reflecting on your time in Nairobi, what moments or experiences stand out and are memorable for you? Oh, so many. Obviously the baby, right? <laughs> so, so that's the number. <laughs> All right. All right. No, okay. If you want to do something more connected to Africa, the first time I went to Bongoma village, because it was so different than Nairobi or Mombasa, right? So just seeing how people live, the, the housing, right? The more of the huts, right? And uh, how people wash, a shower in the village, in the river, you know? So it's, it's very different, you know? So I think this is something I remember the most, you know, when it comes to Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you a lot, brother. So, um... This is the second last question. So how has the local community in Nairobi welcomed you? Very welcoming, yeah. Especially Kenya is so welcoming. It's so easy to connect with people here. So easy to make friends here in Kenya. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants to get to know you. Everybody, the people speak English, you know. So it's, it's so easy to connect with people in Kenya. So I would say anywhere we move to, easy to connect with people. So, yeah, very welcoming. Mm -hmm. I think if you are working places and uh, you, are, you easily blend in, it's because uh, you don't have that negative energy that fights with other people, you know? Some people, where they go, there's always fights, there's always conflicts. Uh, but I, I can tell you if you've been in Kenya for three years, it's been good. The other sister, if you saw the other video I did, she was complaining great deal, and she was complaining this and that. You see, you could tell that for somebody who is a visitor in a country, she's speaking too much, and the too much she's speaking is not good. It's, uh, she's speaking bad things against Africa. She said Africans are weak, all Africans. She used all Africans are weak. I was not there when she was being scammed, brother. Yeah. My brother here was not there, sister was not there, the other sister was not there. But she's saying all Africans are weak and greedy. Now there is... Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's all I was going to say. It's not true. I was agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... The last question. What is your advice to an African-American who wants to come to Africa, but they're afraid? Mm. Yeah. 
don't be afraid, right? Just you have to you have to overcome your fears, right? That's part of life, right? Overcoming what you fear, right? So I think you have to do that, overcome your fears, and then once you get here, you have to connect. Like I said earlier, connect with the local, right? Know what you what you should do, know what you shouldn't do, right? Get to know people. A lot of um, foreigners they'll come and maybe they'll just stay in their homes, right? And they don't want to connect with uh, Africans, right? Or they're too afraid to, right? But you have to, you know, in order for you to enjoy the country, right? So I think that's that's the important part of it. It's just connecting. And that's why I think Kenya is a good place because you don't have to try so hard to connect to people, right? You, They will just come to you, right? Yeah, especially with Kenya compared to the other countries I've been to in Africa. So yeah, I would I would say that. Mm -hmm. Apart from Kenya, which country do you recommend to an African American? Man, Uganda, Uganda, yeah. I love Uganda. Uh, it's is they speak English there too, and uh, people are very nice there. I think Kenyans are a little bit friendlier uh, than Ugandans, but Ugandans are very nice too, right? So it's very easy to connect there as well. It's very similar to Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. These questions were so many. Yeah. <laughs> but we finished them. Yeah, good, good questions. questions. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, brother, here you have a question. Um, it's not a question. It's just to thank you guys for sparing time and um, being able to be to agreeing um, to events as hosting you guys. And um, it's been a pleasure yeah. for you giving us um, your thoughts in all those questions and for your fiancé taking a time carrying the kid all this time just to give us the information we needed just to enlighten the world um, in very serious issues issues of black americans coming yeah. back to the motherland and you've given it a um, good perspective so thank you so so much bro yeah. and your fiance thank you yeah. so much can i say one last thing and then she can say That's one last thing okay me. um i respect you guys for being able to uh communicate these topics right to and connect the Kenyans and the black Americans on your YouTube channel, right? And having people on like me, you know, to be interviewed for this. This is extremely important, I think, to connect the two bridges, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything else you wanna say? Just want to say thank you for hosting us on your channel. It was nice and you're giving out good info to the other black Americans looking forward to moving here. Channel? Yes, we have a YouTube channel together. Yeah, together. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay. U.S. Actually, yeah. I, I was to say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, okay. So we have two channels. You know, the first one is U.S.A. meets Kenya, and the other one is Boo Boo Gang. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Where have I seen this channel? You've seen, you seen it before. before. Yeah. I think okay. I think I saw USA meets Kenya. Oh, you seen USA? <laughs> yeah. Me, me, I've seen Boo Boo Gang. Okay, <laughs> the name sounds familiar. Uh, so, yes. so what we'll do? Um, mm. we'll keep uh, we'll post a link yeah. to the channels yeah. in the description. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We so appreciate here it. is my good friend Evans uh, Rayola. He also mm. has a channel called Evans Rayola. Yeah. Um, bro, speak to yourself, brother. Um, <laughs> I have a channel, even Sayola, but I've majored on Kenyan content. Oh, yeah. yeah, but um, it's been a pleasure having you guys. So you can also go check out my work. We will. Oh. We definitely will. And you can also make us meet other African Americans. Yeah, we really yeah. need that. I have many friends. We'll talk to them if they are open. They come for you to interview them. Uh, they don't need to come here. Whichever place they say, if it's safe, we'll get it there. Yeah. yeah. If cars are not stolen. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I think it's a wrap, bro. Yeah. It's a wrap. Yeah.